What is up YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. Excuse the lighting. I usually shoot from right here because the sun is shining and I can get that. Uh, but I kind of wanted to switch things up. I'm doing what I feel and I'm experimenting with how I want to do this whole thing. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I've been wanting to do this video for a while and I've been uh, working on this video for about a week and a half, almost two weeks. I've been really trying to get this out. So today I'll be doing an Avatar The Last Airbender live action fan casting. And whether or not Netflix is already working on it and has their cast, this is kind of what I put together. Some of my favorite actors, in my opinion, through my eyes, through my perspective. I'm not a professional casting agent. This is just my opinion. Uh, so please don't flame me. <laughs> Hopping right into it, we're starting off with Aang, who is our favorite airbender, the last airbender. Uh, we have Ian Chen and Forrest Wheeler. They both do an extraordinary job as Eddie's adorable younger brothers on ABC's Fresh Off the Boat and have great acting capability. I'm actually leaning more towards Forrest Wheeler. Forrest is always bright and smiley in the show and so is Aang in The Last Airbender. They match personalities very well. He's even been trained in martial arts, stunts, and flips, which is a plus. Uh, that way, he'll be even more comfortable with combat choreography when the time comes. Just look at him go off with these swords. <laughs> Not only that, but he looks exactly like Aang. Here's me erasing his hair and drawing the Avatar arrow on him. <laughs> I know he is getting quite a bit older from his days on Fresh Off the Boat. He's currently 16, but I'm actually going for a more aged-up cast, so that's who I have for Aang. Next up for Katara, I have Aulii Caravaglio. You may recognize Aulii from Moana. I think she's a beautiful young actress that is just a ball of sunshine. She's amazing. I know waterbenders are based off the Inuit tribes. I did a lot of searching and I couldn't find many Inuit actors. I did, however, find Blue Hunt, a gorgeous Native American actress, but aged at 25, I felt like she was just a little too old for the role as opposed to a 19-year-old Aulii. Katara has strong morals and always does what is right. She bears so much similarities to a Disney princess, so Aulii is my definite pick for Katara. Next up, we have the pimp, the goofball heartthrob, the backbender himself, Sokka. Now, a lot of people were shooting for Boo Boo Stewart, who is a great actor, don't get me wrong, but I just see him as Haru more, and that's actually my casting for Haru. <laughs> um, others were pushing for Forrest Good Luck, an actor who played in The Revenant and The Miseducation of Cameron Post. He's definitely a skilled actor and looks the part, but I just don't get Sokka vibes from him. I get more Sokka vibes from this actor named Kekoa Kakumano, and this handsome man played in Hawaii Five-0 and was the young Aquaman. Uh, I get Sokka vibes from this dude. I watched a couple interviews, I watched his roles, and I definitely feel he can pull off that stud-like um, goofball that is Sokka. So Kekoa Kakumano for Sokka. So now we have one of my favorite actors and one of my favorite characters, Brandon Suhu for the role of Prince Zuko. I have been a fan of Brandon Suhu since he was Cousin Connor on Super Ninjas, and Zuko is everyone's favorite character, so yeah. Brandon bears a lot of resemblance to Zuko, um, here's him next to a picture of Zuko, here's him as Zuko, here's him with Zuko's scar, here's him doing a backflip as Prince Zuko, and here's him next to Zuko's voice actor, Dante Bosco. He is no stranger to the acting industry, he's been acting since he was young, and he's also been training in martial arts, so there you go. Many people were recommending Peter Sudarso as Prince Zuko, and I love Peter Sudarso, he's great. If you guys don't know who he is, he's a Chinese Indonesian actor, and he also is the Blue Ranger. Uh, I just think that he uh, is a little too old for the role, he's aged at 29 right now. Apart from that, Isaac Jin Solstein, if we're going for a younger option, he I believe, is, I believe he's 18 or 19. He was actually in the original Last Airbender movie. I'm unsure of his skill level in acting, but Zuko is definitely going to require a skilled actor, especially with that redemption arc. So these are three choices. This is for Zuko, but you guys already know my number one, Brandon Suhu is awesome, and I was even on his TikTok live a couple weeks ago, and he sounds just like Zuko. Hi, Zuko here. Hi, Zuko here. For my next casting choice, we have Paul Sun Hyung Lee, who was another outstanding actor, and I'm casting him for the role of Iroh. He plays the dad in Kim's Convenience, and he's super funny. I think that he um, he looks the part just as much as he can act the part. He's the most lovable character on Kim's Convenience, and he's super hilarious. And also, I feel like he can portray that serious side very well. Iroh definitely has serious moments and very funny moments. My only concern is that Iroh gets really ripped while he is imprisoned in book 3, so I don't know if that will be a problem for Paul. But apart from that, we have our Iroh. Up next, we have Peyton Elizabeth Lee as Toph. I know many people wanted a blind actress for Toph, but my Google search for young female Asian American blind actresses didn't go too well. I watched a couple episodes from her Disney show and it deals with serious topics, but it's also very funny and cute. Truly entertaining and I'd even consider watching the whole thing. <laughs> if we wanted someone a little bit younger for Toph, I would definitely go with Mia Check. 
I don't know how to pronounce her last name, but I think I'd just say Kyek. She was in Netflix's Always Be My Maybe, and I'm unsure if she'd be able to pull off Toph's sarcasm and somewhat rude personality, but you never know. Ella Bosco also came into the picture. She is related to Zuko's voice actor, Dante Bosco, and she starred in Birds of Prey. She is a young Filipina actress, and it'd be great to see her do her thing as Toph also. But my final decision for Toph is Peyton Elizabeth Lee. For Suki, I have chosen the stunning female actress, YouTuber, and singer Arden Cho, best known for her role as Kira, the sword-wielding kitsune influenced by Japanese culture in hit TV show Teen Wolf. Her and Suki both have a fierce but sweet personality and it'd be entertaining to see Arden Cho kick some ass as a Kyoshi warrior. For Azula, and man, Azula takes a certain high level of charisma. Not just any actress can portray the amount of character that was written into Azula. She's elegant yet maniacal. It was tough because although there's many lookalikes, Japanese model and actress Rila Fukushima stood out to me. This scene from Wolverine especially highlights her charisma. She can definitely kill the role. Crazy to say, but she is 40. Look at how young she looks. 40? No way, she does not look a day over 16. And if not her, then I'd recommend Lana Condor. She does an absolutely stellar job in Deadly Class, attitude, combat scenes and all. Funnily enough, before doing research for this video, I'd never even seen her play a role like that. I saw her in To All The Boys I've Loved Before and she seemed a bit more bubbly and cute. Unlike the cruel and sinister Azula, more like Ty Lee. Um, I had so much trouble casting Ty Lee. She's flawless. I mean, look at her. I can also see Ashley Liao play Ty Lee. She was in Fuller House and Always Be My Maybe, both on Netflix, and she's a sweetheart, just like Lana Condor, and just like Ty Lee. Since Ty Lee is so athletic, I could even see the cheerful, perky fitness YouTuber Chloe Ting play her. <laughs> Ultimately, though, I still see Rila Fukushima as Azula, and decided on Lana Condor as Ty Lee. Lyrica Okano, she plays the powerful teenager Nico Minoru on Marvel's Runaways. May gives off an almost emotionless, depressing vibe sometimes, and I think Lyrica can adapt to that and play May with ease. And for Jet, I see someone of Filipino descent playing him, hopefully. I tried my best to find Filipino teen male actors, but I don't see too many in the media, actually. I'm going to lean with Isaac Jin Solstein for now, but it'd be really dope and refreshing to see a young Filipino male actor take this role. Alright, so for Momo, I was thinking to get the actual Momo herself. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I was actually thinking of the lemur from Zubumafu, that one kid's show, but he sadly passed away in 2014, so I guess I'll just have to animate Momo. Moving past the main-ish roles, Danish roles, <laughs> well, these roles aren't as big as the main characters, and although that doesn't mean they're not just as important, I didn't spend as much time perfecting the casting on them, and more likely based them off of looks, mostly for the sake of my time, so here we go. Starting off with Fire Lord Ozai, I think he should be played by Daniel Day Kim. Uh, they both have very nice facial structure, although Daniel Day Kim is not as ripped as I thought he would be, but I definitely think that he can get toned up for the role. And this dude that everybody hates should be played by, like, David Lee McInnes, a Korean actor, or Mark Dacascos, which I think he was also on Wally 5 o Avatar Roku should be played by Hal Yamanuchi, 70-year-old Japanese-Italian actor, stuntman, and much more. This man has been in the industry since the 80s. He's even a choreographer. He could definitely do some cool Avatar Roku moves. <laughs> as for Avatar Kiyoshi, I believe she should be played by the graceful Ming-Na Wen. She was the voice actor for Mulan back in the day. Unfortunately, she is 5'3", and apparently Avatar Kiyoshi is 7 feet tall, so if that is a problem, then Tao Okamoto, the Japanese actress in Wolverine, could definitely substitute for Ming Na Wen, but I think Ming Na Wen is perfect for the role. For the next role, I have Ken Watanabe, and at first I thought he could be good as Commander Zhao, but then I looked at him, I looked at a picture of him bald, and I was like, no, that's Long Feng, and I was like, yeah, that's definitely Long Feng. So I have Ken Watanabe as Long Feng. For Judy, I can't help but think of Constance Wu. On Fresh Off the Boat, she had that strict mom vibe, and with her acting skills, she could pull off a creepy Judy vibe. For the chill and awesome King Kue, we deserve another king. We deserve Justin Chan. He was a filmmaker, and he was a token Asian on Twilight. I used to watch him on YouTube all the time, and he's awesome. I definitely feel like Justin Chan is a chill guy, and he could play the role of King Kue. With all these kings around, we get to the wacky King Boomy. And King Boomy is so wacky, I feel like the only person that can play him is Jackie. Wacky Jackie Chan. He's been in the industry for so long, and he's just a lovable dude. I mean, who also played King Boomy? Like, Dian DeVito? <laughs> I'm just kidding. But apart from that, I also thought of Jackie Chan as Jong Jong because they look pretty similar. Uh, I haven't seen Jackie play serious roles though, but 
I think Jackie Chan can. As for Pian Dao, I didn't do too much research on this role, but he could be played by Donnie Yen or Hiroyuki Sanada. They're both very gifted with wielding swords, and that gives them credibility for the role. Um, Dave Bautista, I mean, Sparky Sparky Boom Man could be played by Dave Bautista. They're basically the same person. <laughs> Lucy Liu from Charlie's Angels as June. I mean, look at them. They're both bad bitches. And on the topic of bad bitches, Princess Yue is the baddest bitch ever. She could only be played by Janae Aiko. No other, no, nobody else could match this beauty. Sorry. Moving on to Master Paku, could be played by Wes Duty, the award-winning, critically acclaimed Native American actor. This dude is a legend. He's been in Dances with Wolves, The Last of the Mohicans. He's so great. Uh, Adam Beach for Hakoda. I don't know who Adam Beach is. I found him on the internet. I, I was thinking Jason Momoa, but I don't know if Netflix would want to dish out that much money to get Aquaman to show up for a couple episodes. The Rock as The Rock or The Boulder. They're basically the same person. The creators even said they based them off The Rock, so yeah. And last but not least, The Cabbage Guy as Drumroll, please. Ken Jong, <laughs> we need that comedic relief. Anyways, that concludes my Avatar: The Last Airbender live action fan casting. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Like or subscribe if you want to. Only if you want to. I'm not forcing you to. I put a lot of effort into this video, and I hope that you guys like it. And I hope to make more Avatar videos. So let me know if you guys want to see more Avatar videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys very soon.